Well, the most that's on any show, the most fun is when the lines are blown. It's always the way. I mean, my collection of gag reels and stuff is unprecedented. I mean, just incredible stuff. What kind of stuff? Incredible stuff. Well, my gag reels from Friends and from from Raymond and from Mad About You and from Coach and they're prized possessions of mine. And they're the uncut versions. You know what you see on Dick's show on bloopers or something uh, is not, you know, the uncut stuff. And it's it's their treasures. I mean. Uh, you know, if, if I died tomorrow and people rifled my stuff and found it and put it on eBay, it would get a lot of money. I have a lot of interesting stuff like that. I have photographs of people I could compromise whole careers. <laughs> I have people in hot tubs together that careers would end. <laughs> I was, my first series, my first series as an actor was The Funny Side. It was 1971 and it was supposed to be basically <clears throat> this country's response to that was the week that was. And that was the week that was. It was a famous show on the BBC, which was basically sketches and music looking at the events of the week. So Perskine Danoff decided to do this show, and they cast five couples representing five different demographics with Gene Kelly as the host. Now, for me to be able to work with Gene Kelly, and it was my first series, was extraordinary because all I ever wanted to be growing up was a song and dance man on Broadway. Ultimately, I got to do that. <clears throat> so here I am every week, and I'm hired because I can sing and dance, and I'm going to work with Gene. We're about eight or nine shows in, and now we're doing the funny side looks at holidays and vacations, and we're doing the Halloween sketch. So we're all in some form of mask or costume or something, and Gene has a werewolf uh, a rubberized thing on his head. And one of the most astonishing moments in my career occurred when, at the end of the sketch, he's supposed to take it off and say something, and we black out. We get to the end of the sketch, the entire cast is, is assembled for this particular moment, <clears throat> and he takes off the, the mask, and with it, his piece. Nobody in America or the world, I think, knew that he was bald. And what you're doing right now, for those of you who can't see he's doing this, <laughs> the whole audience and us who did. Now, from the audience you heard this, oh! They gasped because they knew instantly they're seeing something they should never have seen. Everybody freezes, nobody knows what to do, and Gene runs off stage. So now we're just on stage, everybody's kind of looking at each other, oh my God. <laughs> We saw something we should never have seen. The audience is buzzing too. I mean, we are all in on an amazing secret. Gene comes back in, peace in place, his, his gorgeous self, and completely disarmed the audience by talking about it. And it was one of the great, most breathtaking and then wonderful moments I've ever spent on the stage because when he came back and took everybody's anxiety and pow power away basically by saying okay now you know here's this here's how long ago blah 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 and it was he became like a hero and it was what a fantastic and bizarre and frightening moment um, and to this day I don't think anybody knows that that was uh, what he had on his head and by the way Gene Kelly one of the all-time greatest people I've ever worked with. I mean, if I, I have what I keep, I keep with me, an imaginary suitcase of the Lembeck players. And in the suitcase, all my favorite people, if I get to choose my cast in the imaginary movie I'm doing next, these are the people that populate it, and he's like, you know, the captain of the team. He was fantastic. He took so much time with me. I was so young, my very young 20s, to talk with me, to have a beer with me, tell me about, you know, incredible stories.